Hi everybody, change test glasses out again, and the second glass, same sort of glass, so it's finally time to review the two European lagers sent by Cheshire Homebrew. Now these have been in the fridge, they've been out of the fridge less than five minutes. It looks pretty much crystal crystal clear now, so we're going to go for Cheshire first with the pour. So it's a bit of a hiss, some cannon smoke there. Right, I'm gonna take my glasses off first so I can see what I'm doing. Two and a half centimetres in the bottom. And apart from the glass hazing up, that to me looks pretty much crystal clear. So that is Cheshire. Cheshire is in the test test glass. That's in case I get befuddled later on. So, the homebrew, they're both homebrew, this is the one labelled homebrew, cracky mo. And so we've got a hiss, don't appear to have any can smoke on that one, but let's give it a whirl. Stop there again, about the same amount in the bottom of the bottle. That again, it's lighter. That's pretty much crystal clear, isn't it? Okay. Well, let's have a look at them side by side. So the that's the homebrew one. The Cheshire one is ever so slightly darker. Not by much. Very little in it. Let's have a sniff. Yeah, that smells like a lager. That smells like a lager. No shit, Sherlock. That's a slightly maltier smell. I'm suspecting that's the one. It's slightly darker. It's got a slightly maltier smell. He did one with table sugar and one liquid malt extract, I think. So I'm thinking, whichever, this one might be the one with liquid malt extract in. So I'll give it a, a swirl around the gob. That's nice, that. That's, um, Yeah, a very nice, refreshing lager that. Some multi tones. Let's let's. We're doing a side by side, so. Don't 
also very nice. I don't think I can tell any difference. I know there is a difference. A nice light, lagery type beer taste. As you would expect, being a lager. That one has a very slight, very slightly bigger mouthfeel, shall we say. Only very slight. If you got served out of those as a lager in a pub, you won't grumble, I don't think. Let's have a quick look. <coughs> right, so there's only 0.2% ABV difference in between them. Beg me pardon. One had a kilo of table sugar, brewed to 21 litres, so that's two litres shy of your standard kit brew, and only 23 litres. Yeah, you can see, that when you have it against the light, I don't know if you can see it there, the light's probably not that good. The one on the right hand side, is it the right hand side? Is it your left hand side? It's your left hand side. The one on my right hand side. The one that's higher up is darker. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see me head through it? Can you see me now? I'm suspecting that is the one that had 1.2 kilos of liquid malt extract in it and 300 de grams of dextrose. They're virtually identical. Yeah, side by side. I can't tell an appreciative difference. So, the darker one, which I'm assuming is the V2, Either way, the V2 is going to have cost more because a kilo of table sugar is, what's that these days, about, I don't know, 50p, 60p, 70p, less than a quid, whereas 1.2 kilos of liquid malt extract and 300 grams of dex dextrose What's that going to be? Six quid? Maybe a bit more? Um, right, so both, both batches had a hop tea of 25 grams of Tepnanger hops. And they were both bottled with a table, table, tablespoon, hey, no, it weren't, a teaspoon of table sugar. 
A tablespoon of tea sugar. It, wasn't, it was a teaspoon of table sugar. Right. So, thank you very much to Cheshire Homebrew for a very interesting comparison. Is it worth pimping the kits? No. No. Don't think so. good beers. So, on that, thank you very much for sending them, and like, comment, subscribe, cheers, see you next time, bye. Train